Hi friends, after, after some little gap we are again meeting today. Today I am going to discuss the concept of Keynesian economics. J.M. Keynes, John Maynard Keynes, the very popular British economist who is known as the father of Keynesian economics. You can say that the entire macroeconomics owes a lot to John Maynard Keynes. He is a great economist who has given solution to the Great Depression of 1930. One of the very famous question or the is relating to the theory of effective demand of J.M. Keynes. Keynes has introduced the concept of effective demand. Effective demand is the starting point of the Keynesian theory of employment. Friends, my dear students, Keynes has put forward or Keynes has published a book in 1936, the world famous book, General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money. And by writing this book, Keynes has become world famous. Why? Because he has given solution to the year-long problem of U.S. and the Western continent of the Great Depression of 1930, which has crippled or affected the Western countries around five years. Keynes has challenged the classical theory of employment. My dear students, you are very well aware, classical theory of employment is based on sales law of market. There are two theories of employment. There are n number of theories of employment, but as far as macro is concerned, the classical theory of employment is proposed by Jean Baptiste Say, that is J.B. Say, the very famous classical economist who was working along with, uh, who was popular along with Adam Smith and David Ricardo, the classical group of economists. That is, J.B. Say said that supply create its own demand. That means whatever is produced will automatically be demanded. There may be chances for temporary unemployment, but in the long run, there is no chance for unemployment because economy is always in full employment, according to J.B. Say. Then, so classical theory, concept of full employment is the classical theories in, in classical theory full employment was a normal feature but Keynes challenged the classical theory he said that full employment is not a normal feature Keynesian theory is known as general theory because this theory deals with all level of employment then we will see as we go further how did Keynes come out to the solution of the great depression Classical economists believe in long-run equilibrium, whereas Keynes believed in short-run equilibrium. According to the Keynesian theory, all are dead in the long run. So we should not believe in long run. Keynesian theory is basically short-run theory. Now, Keynes has introduced his theory with the help of effective demand. What do you mean by effective demand? Effective demand means it is a total expenditure in an economy. Total expenditure means consumption plus investment. We know that in an economy, people spend money basically on consumption and investment. So effective demand is nothing but the total expenditure on consumption and investment. Okay. Now, According to Keynes, effective demand depends upon two factors. One is aggregate demand and second is aggregate supply. Since it is the hardcore macroeconomics, you have to be careful enough. Effective demand depends upon aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So according to Keynes, employment depends upon effective demand. Effective demand depends upon aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now the question comes, what is aggregate demand? Aggregate demand is the maximum sale proceeds. Please remember, it is a maximum sale proceeds. I'm just writing it down so that you will not be having the doubt. It is the maximum sale proceeds 
that the entrepreneur is expecting from the sale of his output because production is based on anticipated demand when he produces the product will be demanded that is why it is expected and aggregate demand curve we are going to draw the curve it will be sloping from left to right so aggregate demand is nothing but maximum sale proceeds the producer is expecting from the sale of his output now aggregate demand curve you can see here it is aggregate demand curve in the x axis we will be showing employment y axis we will be showing aggregate demand aggregate demand in the y axis so aggregate demand is you can see here aggregate demand it is showing the relationship between aggregate demand and employment now what is aggregate supply students aggregate supply is just opposite of aggregate demand it is a minimum sale proceeds that the producer is expecting from the sale of the output aggregate sub aggregate demand was a maximum sale proceeds this is a minimum so we know that minimum sale proceeds is nothing but cost of production any producer when he is not able to cover the cost of production naturally he will not continue the production or he will reduce his output so we are aware that when we speak the minimum cost of production it is including normal profit because without normal profit no producer is interested to continue the production so what is aggregate supply price aggregate supply price is the minimum sale proceeds that the producer is expecting from the sale of output nothing but aggregate supply is the cost of production please remember now we are going to draw aggregate supply friends kindly note that aggregate supply curve is increasing here up to this point here i am going to draw aggregate supply you can see here this point this point is f at point f aggregate supply reaches full employment look here aggregate supply increases from o to f it's very clear in the diagram at f economy reaches full employment after f aggregate supply become perfectly inelastic it becomes vertical straight line so again we are repeating aggregate supply is increasing up to the point f at f economy reaches full employment after f aggregate supply become vertical straight line it is perfectly inelastic so the full employment is this point which jb say was emphasizing but kane says that it is not easy to achieve this point okay now what is this s1 stands for look s1 is aggregate supply so when aggregate supply is s1 ol1 is the level of employment and aggregate supply increases to s2 then employment increases to ol2 then finally aggregate supply reaches full employment yes we have to draw the aggregate supply this is just to make you understand level x axis we are showing the employment y axis we are showing aggregate supply so how this how we are drawing aggregate supply it increases up to this point here the economy reaches full employment then it becomes straight line okay so this is a straight line please remember this is aggregate supply remember make it very very clear this is full employment so in keynesian theory this is not a normal feature so economy reaches full employment and here is the level of full employment output here what does it mean s1 when aggregate supply is as1 employment is say on1 when aggregate supply is s2 employment is increasing to n2 and employment increases up to f after f aggregate supply become vertical straight line it become perfectly inelastic this is the major point in keynesian theory and aggregate supply is constant in the short run so aggregate supply 
slopes upward till the economy reaches full employment. After that, it becomes straight line. Now we are going to discuss what is effective demand. Effective demand at this at this point. Look, left hand side you can see. Effective demand is the point where ADF is equal to ASF. So look where is effective demand. Effective demand is at this point where ADF is equal to ASF. We have to be very careful. The most important diagram in Keynesian theory. ADF is equal to ASF. Now be very careful with one point. E is effective demand. You are very clear. What is S2? S2 is the point where economy reaches full employment. Effective demand is E and S2 is the point where economy reaches full employment. So what does Keynesian theory emphasizes? Effective demand is not at the full employment. Always you remember, effective demand is less than full employment. You may ask the question then madam what is S1? S1 is neither effective demand nor full employment. It is less than full employment. It is less than effective demand. So, effective demand is the point where ADF is equal to ASF. That time, ON is the level of employment. Then, S2 is the point where economy reaches full employment. So, my dear students, it is very clear. Look, the same diagram I have repeated, S2 is the point where economy reaches full employment. So, Keynesian theory of Employment is not at the full employment. Here is where Keynes is disputing with JBC. Why? JBC said that economy is always at full employment. So Keynes has challenged that. Keynes said that if economy is at full employment, demand is equal to supply, then how did Great Depression occur? Great Depression has occurred because supply was more than demand or aggregate demand was very less. That was the reason for the Great Depression. And though Keynes was born in Britain, he was very popular in America because President Roosevelt was a good friend of Keynes. So he has given a solution. Keynes has given a solution to depression crippled US economy. And what was the solution that Keynes has given? Keynes has given this solution. How can the economy come out of depression? That is a question. Economy is in depression because effective demand is less. It's very clear. ADF is equal to ASF. Suppose that economy is at full employment. That means effective demand is at full employment. Naturally, depression will not be there. So what is the way to push the economy out of depression? My dear students, the only way is we will study this in the next videos. The ADF should push up. If the ADF is pushing up, what will happen? ADF will intersect aggregate supply at full employment. That means effective demand and full employment will be together. If such a situation happens, economy will come out of depression. But during 1930 to 34, the biggest question was how can you push ADF up? It was a very challenging job. There is where Keynes has emphasized the role of government. C plus I plus G model. Government has to play a very, very important role. Yes, my dear students, the very famous Keynesian theory or the very famous three-sector model, C plus I plus G. So Keynes has emphasized the role of government to help the U.S. economy and Western economies to come out of depression. So I hope I have made my point of effective demand very clear. And in the further videos, we will be discussing multiplier, consumption function, investment function and so on. If any particular chapter you are looking for, kindly discuss with me. Thank you my dear students. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Have a nice day.